Dr. Wiederholt, you're working in virtual reality post-deployment to try and help people with combat stress. How does that work? What we do is called exposure therapy. It's been used successfully for the past 40 years. And instead of doing that in their imagination or in their mind, we actually put them in a computer simulation where we can recreate the traumas they might have experienced in Iraq. But we can do it in a controlled way with a therapist there. The first person we put into the virtual reality world, we saw a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. He was having nightmares. He had started abusing alcohol. He met full criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. What would that man have been seeing through virtual reality? He was walking around the battlefield. He saw buildings. He saw a recreation of Iraq, streets in Iraq. And then we actually also have a hospital setting where he can go in the hospital and look at other wounded people. We have an Iraqi home setting. We have a marketplace. So we have nine different spaces that are modeled after what we've been told are the worst triggers that they experienced in Iraq. Before we put the patient into the virtual world, we actually spend two or three sessions teaching them some coping skills by teaching them their breathing, by teaching them some thought techniques to deal with what they're feeling. And then we actually show them what happens to their physiology during the virtual reality. And this is very powerful for them because they know they can learn to control some of that reaction and stop it from becoming overwhelming to them when they're in the real world. It sounds like this is very much like um, the desensitization that people would use in any other phobia. That's correct. Post-traumatic stress disorder is one of the most severe anxiety disorders, but it is another anxiety disorder. Somebody with an anxiety disorder needs to go through systematic desensitization. That works the best to do some sort of exposure. And is it useful for other sorts of combat stress that aren't post-traumatic stress disorder? Something else we've done is pre-deployment used it for stress exposure training. So we actually trained 11,000 troops before they went to Iraq to expose them to a lot of the things they would be dealing with before they got there. If we train them in the virtual world, then we test them in a Hollywood movie set in San Diego, and we see that those skills transfer over. For instance, when we train combat medics, we don't want them to see their first amputation in Iraq. One of the things that some people might be concerned about is learning things in the virtual world and then learning things on a film set, some of the recruits might see war as a bit of a game. I, I suppose that could be a valid argument. Um, I think the unfortunate thing is that we do have to desensitize them some of what they're going to see. Well, we're standing in here in the General's Gallery at the Royal Military Academy, surrounded by paintings of generals from 1865 onwards. Now, they didn't have battle minds, they didn't have virtual reality. What's changed so that now we need all this? I think one thing that's different in Iraq that, that people are reporting back to us, at least, is that there's no front line and there's no real enemy. In Vietnam, we knew who the enemy was, but now they're on 24-7. And so I think that may be one of the reasons we're seeing more people coming back.